All right, congratulations, you have made it to Unit 2, Part 2, which is all about the greatest common factor and least common multiple, which is the guts of math, and um, it's the basis of so many different things that we do. So to get started in 1A, you should have your notes open in your packet um, to 1A notes, and we're going to start with talking about dis divisibility rules. So this is the like bread and butter for our greatest common factor and least common multiple basis before we get to those. So I know some of these are going to be review for you, but it's good for us to know some tips and tricks for this so that it makes it easier for us later to apply it. So we're going to have our notes open, and on the left side it has, is it divisible by, so it'll give you a number, and then there's a rule for it. So the very first one, which I'm sure you know, is how do you know if it's divisible by one? Well, all numbers are divisible by one. Go ahead and start writing. You should have your pencil ready and start to copy this into your notes. But all numbers are divisible by one. So no matter what the number, it will always have a divisibility um, with one. Okay. The next one, which again, you probably know, is is it divisible by two? Well, it will be if it ends in an even number. So it ends with a zero, a two, a four, a six, or eight. So that's how you know if a number is divisible by two. Now this next one might be a little bit um, newer to you. Now remember, make sure you're writing all of these in your notes. You need to have these for later. Is when is a number divisible by three? So this trick may be new to you. So what you can do to determine if the uh, number is divisible by 3 is what you can do is you can take the sum of the digits, so looking at the number, so like I have an example here, 426. If I take the sum of each dig digit, so 4 plus 2 plus 6, if that sum is divisible by 3, then my original number is divisible by 3. So like with this example, 4 plus 2 is 6. 2 plus 6 is 12, and 12 is divisible by 3, so that means 426 is also divisible by 3. Kind of a neat trick. So you can take the sum, so adding up the digits, and if that is divisible by 3, then the original number is divisible by 3. Again, make sure you write all these down. If you want to write this as an example, you can, but at least get the rule written down. To know if a number is divisible by 4, what you can do is look at the number formed by the last two digits. So like this example, 428. If the last two digits, that, that number that forms those last two digits, if that's divisible by four, then the original number is divisible by four. So like this one, 428. Well, 28 are the last two digits of this number. So when I look at 28, that is divisible by 4, because 4 times 7 is 28. So because the last two digits formed are divisible by 4, the whole entire number is divisible by 4. Now what if you have a number that is only two digits, or maybe it's only one digit? Well, you probably can figure out if it's divisible by 4. Because if I only have one digit, I'm going to know, because the only numbers that would work that would be single digits would be 4 and 8 but the rest of them aren't going to be divisible by 4. And if it's a two-digit, you could probably figure that one out too. You could probably go through your multiples of 4 to see, hmm, is it divisible by 4? And if you're not sure, you always can divide or use a multiplication chart to kind of help you out. But this is a great trick for numbers that are bigger than um, two digits so that you can see if the number that's kind of a bigger number is divisible by four. You look at the last two digits, if they, those, that number that it forms is divisible by four, then the original number is also divisible by four. Make sure again you're writing all the notes down. This next one you probably know, it's not too bad. If it's divisible by five, it just means the number ends with a five or zero. That's it. Like when you count by fives, five, 10, 15, 20, they all end with a five or a zero. So the number is divisible by five if it ends with a five or zero. The trick for six is kind of nifty. You can tell if a number is divisible by six if it's divisible by both two and three. Kind of makes sense since two times three is six. So basically it has to uh, pass the divisible by two and divisible by three rules. And if it passes both of them, it is also divisible by six. So if you go to check 
Is it divisible by 2? Is it divisible by 3? And it's yes for both of them, then you automatically know it's divisible by 6. For 7, there really isn't a rule. So all you can do is just divide using our standard algorithm we've used. Remember, that's just a fancy word for steps we follow to solve a problem. So we just divide. There's really no other way to do it. It's kind of a crazy trick that you can look up if you'd like, but this is the easiest way is to just divide. And that's actually the same rule for if a number is divisible by 8. You can just check with division. There's no fancy trick for those two. You can just check with by dividing, which you can do for all these other ones, but sometimes it's faster to check with some of these uh, rules instead of uh, having to divide every time. Again, make sure you're getting these down. You can always pause the video and rewind it if you miss something. If I'm going too fast, you can go back and, t and get your notes written down. So make sure you get all the rules. All right, the next one, this one divisible by 9 is really similar to 3. The only difference is when you take the sum of the digits. So remember, adding them up, 4 plus 2 plus 6. If that sum's divisible by 9, so instead of 3, we're looking at 9 now then it's divisible by 9. So like look at our example, the same one we use for 3. 4 plus 2 is 6, plus 6 is 12. Well, 12 is not divisible by 9, so this number is not divisible by 9. If it would have added up to something that would have been divisible by 9, then it would have worked, but this one didn't, so it's not divisible by 9. The last one is divisible by 10. This is one of my favorites, so easy to remember. If it ends in a zero, it's divisible by 10. I'm sure you had that one. We've talked about that before. Okay, so again, if you need to pause or rewind the video to get the rules written down, please feel free. But I'm going to move on to one more example before you start your practice. So let's go ahead and try and use those rules. So you just wrote them down. Again, if you need to go back and take a look, feel free. But let's decide, and we know one's not on here because of course one goes into 750. It's, of course it's divisible by that because all numbers are. So I'm not going to do one, but let's go through each number and we'll place it on the yes side if this number is divisible by them and no if it's not. And you're just going to kind of watch and kind of think in your head ahead of time, could you move these where they go? So 750, okay, I'm going to start with my rule with two and think or look back at your notes. The rule for 2 is if it ends with an even number, so a 0, 2, 4, 6, or 8. Well, since this number ends in a 0, I know 2 is going to be, or that this number is going to be divisible by 2. So I'm going to put that on the yes side. My rule for 3 is if the sum of the digits um, add up to something that's divisible by 3, then the original number is divisible by 3. So I'm going to do 7 plus 5 is 12. 12 plus 0 is just 12 again, and 12 is divisible by 3, so my original number, 750, is also divisible by 3, so it gets to go on the yes side too. Woo! <laughs> All right, number 4. The, the rule for that one, if you go and look at your packet, is if the last two digits of the number form, formed by the number is divisible by 4, then the original number is divisible by 4. So if I look, the last two digits are 50, is what it makes, 50. Well, 50 is not divisible by 4. I know that because 48 is divisible by 4, which comes before 50. And then if I count 4 more, I get to 52. So 50 is not divisible by 4. That would not be a multiple of 4. So this goes on the no side. Hmm, sorry, 4. All right, 5. The rule for that one is if it ends in a 0 or a 5. And this ends in a 0, so yep, it is divisible by 5. Well, my rule for 6 is if it works for 2 and 3, then it also works for 6. And 2 and 3 are on my yes side, so 6 gets to go on the yes side too. All right, the rule for 7 is to just divide. Well, I'm going to kind of do this in my head for a second. So let me think. Hmm, if I imagine that this had a long division sign and the 7 was on the outside, I would say 7 fits into 7 one time. And 1 times 7 is 7. Subtract get 0. I bring down my 5. Hmm. 7 does not fit into 5, so I would have to put a 0 up there. So then I get 5 again, bring down the 0. 7 does not fit into 50 evenly, so 
Nope, it's not going to work out evenly. I would get some kind of decimal or fraction answer. So nope, 7 goes on the no side. I'm going to do the same thing for 8. Well, this time, if I imagine my long division sign and 8's on the outside, 8 does not fit into 7, but it does fit into 75, and it fits in 9 times. So I'd put 9 up here, 72 down here. When I subtract, I'm left with 3. Bring down the 0. Oh, 8 does not fit into 30 now would be my number down there. And so I'm going to end up with a, a decimal or fraction answer for that too. So 8 goes over here. Okay, so my rule for 9, remember that is when you sum of the digits is divisible by 9. And if I add these up like we did before, we got 12. And 12 is not divisible by 9. So 9 goes on the no side. And our last one, my favorite, is if it's divisible by 10, and it ends in a 0, so that means it is divisible by 10. So we got 10 on the yes side. Okay? So that's what I would um, circle on your practice coming up next, is I would circle 2, 3, 5, 6, and 10, because those did go into 750, and I just wouldn't circle 4, 7, 8, 9, because those did not work. So looking at your practice on the next page, level 1A practice, for each number on the left. So here's your number on the left. So this is kind of like what we just did. Circle the numbers on the right, so in your list here, that it is divisible by. So the first one is done for you. You need to actually circle it, but I have it done here for you, and I'm pretty sure you could have gotten it. But the example is 10. So 2, 5, and 10 all work for the number 10. So now when you go on to the next one, like 15, you're going to use your rules. So you're going to circle only the numbers that that are that the original number is divisible by. So whatever numbers on the left, you're going to circle these numbers if it's divisible by it. Okay? When you're done, make sure you check with the answer key and then you get a peer signature. So you're going to check with a peer to see did they um do what they were supposed to do. So when you get that signature, when you go to ask a peer for their signature, you need to ask them to kind of look over it and, and ask them, like explain to them, hey, I just got done with this part. I um, checked it with the answer key. I got all right. Could you please sign it for me? Just like you would with a teacher. So make sure you ask a friend to help you out. Good luck, and I know you'll ace those divisibility rules.